So this is my chicken yard. We live on just over a half an acre and the chickens have about an eighth of the property. Uh, the big building in the background is a corrugated metal uh, wrapped shed structure. Used to be an open side and just kind of a not fully covered roof uh, hay shed and we closed it in and put the metal around it, uh, did the doors, put in a, the small chicken door you see kind of in the middle there. And my 51 birds live in there. I'll take you inside there shortly. But before we actually go into the yard, you can see a bunch of my birds here at the gate waiting for me to come in. They think they're going to get treats. But uh, let's take a look over here. Give me just a second and I'm going to pan this way. This is our quarantine uh, set up here. This is a small uh, chicken run. <clears throat> when we get sick birds or when we get new birds, they go into here uh, to stay separated for a while. If somebody gets hurt, they go in here for their protection so they can recover. Uh, and then as we go into the yard, you're gonna see over here on the right side of the screen, the big green structure. That is our small coop that'll hold uh, easily eight birds, eight to 10 birds, depending on their size. So little birds, if we have babies, um, we don't usually put them up in there. If we do, we lock them in there so they can't get out. But uh, normally we don't put any more than eight to 10 birds in there at any given time. And then that piece comes and connects to the left edge over here. It connects to there and the ramp runs down inside. And then we fence it, uh, we gate it off around the structure. Uh, so that they can have a place to stay while they're in quarantine while we're you know waiting to integrate them or while they're recovering So come with me. Let's go into the chicken pen uh, My chickens and I are very friendly. I love my birds uh, They run out to the gate for me. They run out to the fence for me when I come outside if they hear my voice they'll run so uh, My sign says let's uh, zoom in here Keep the gate closed no matter what the chickens say because they always, always want out. Go ahead and go in. Shout. Oh, let me in. There we go. Sorry about the panning. I don't want to make anybody sick. So these are some of my buff Orpingtons. They love to run over and get pettings. That's a speckled Sussex. Another speckled, another buff. And some silver laced wine dots, gold lace wine dot. This is a Colombian wine dot. The gray and black one here is a barred rock. They are our oldest. I have five of those. They are our oldest birds. We've had them for about three years. This is a brown leghorn. You can tell the brown leghorn by the white ear. The well summers look very similar to the brown leghorn, but they don't have the white ear. Let me see if I can find a well summer for us. Here's a well summer. And as she turns her head, you can see she doesn't have the white ear. So that's the well summer. Again, I'll post uh, stills of these. Uh, have a couple. This is a, one of our Easter eggers. We have 11 of those. There's another gold on the left, gold lace wine dot, and two more Easter eggers. A couple more of the barred rocks. A little bit closer picture of our small coop. This was the first coop my wife and I built, our oldest coop. Those are some Rhode Island reds. The white ones are white leghorns. A couple more Easter eggers off here in the distance. And this is my one I call my gray wolf Easter egger. She has a pretty gray profile and a dark gray uh, cheeks and beard. And I really like her. She's super sweet. Sometimes she'll let me reach down and pet her. Other times she runs away. Today she's going to run away. She doesn't like the camera. There's some more of my birds. Let's go take a look. This is their yard. Keep a couple of wading pools full of water for them to bathe in. They drink in it. There's another Easter egg or dust bathing over there in the corner. We take ashes from our fire pit and we put them up against the rock over here and they dust bathe in that. It's really good for them just like lye and soap for us to get clean. They use the ash the same way. 
This is the chicken's entrance. We leave this open unless it's super windy or we hear coyote or we've seen raccoons or skunk, then we'll close it. But normally we leave this open 24 seven so they can go in and out. Going inside. Watch out girls. <laughs> Back up. This is my feed station. I designed and built this myself. It is a 2x4 table with particle board topper. I've cut a hole in the middle of it. You can see down on the bottom I have 4 inch PVC. I have assembled using 45s, two 45s, a T, and then a couple of connectors there. That goes up to a, a connector on, on the bottom of the barrel that is like a toilet base connector, a toilet drain connector where that all hooks in and it actually has a threaded male nipple and then a female connector on the, the down tube there. So that screws on. That's a 33 gallon uh, trash can that holds 150 pounds of feed. So I refill that as it runs low, but they're allowed to free feed. And uh, the speckled Sussex is begging for some camera time here, it looks like, in this well summer as well. Anyway, so that's my feed system. For waterers, I have two hanging waterers, this one and that one. Those hold three and a half gallons. I have this five gallon uh, that we keep up on a concrete slab and a seven gallon that we keep up on an old milk crate uh, to keep them as clean as we can. But uh, these are, are, I take care of these. Usually I refill them about once a week. Uh, just to rinse them out. The two hanging ones, you can see maybe the cables that run up the power cords. And they run up to this power outlet. And on the far side, let me see if I can get, a, get it in the frame here. There's that light gray uh, power brick there that has the two green cords coming out of it. That is actually a thermal sensor that detects when the temperature drops down to just above freezing and it will kick on the cables run down and I'll see if I can zoom in there there are heaters in the two hanging ones so what happens is uh, when it detects that it's just about freezing it kicks that on and activates that which turns on those heaters so the two hanging waterers never freeze and if I notice that the other water is freezing then I'll pour it out and uh, and let them just use the hanging waters and refill them every day so that they have plenty of water. And then in the background here, this is my perch that my wife and I designed and built. It's a four tier perch. It is 10 feet wide. Um, the first rung, uh, first rung is I think 21 inches off the ground and the far back one is 52 inches off the ground. So that's the perch with little ramps so they can climb up there. And they all sleep up there or over in the corner I have a triangle perch which is the base of an old TV stand. So they all sleep there. What you see over here, the chickens, well, now she's running away because I'm filming her. These are my nesting boxes. Uh, this was originally 20 nesting boxes, but we decided that because they all use the same two or three anyway, there's no reason to have 20 of them. So I took out dividers and made them 10 oversized boxes and the girls seem to really prefer that. Uh, I always get eggs in this one. Sometimes in this one. Sometimes in the lower one there and then always in the upper and lower over there are my primary spots. And then just off of the side over here, uh, behind the bag of pine chips, pine shavings, there's a little spot that I have a couple of girls who like to get down in there and lay their eggs because they're just like that. And then I've got one who likes to burrow in over here in the corner and lay her eggs. So as I said, we have 51 chickens. Um, like I said, 10 or 11 different breeds. Some of them breed uh, lay daily. The, um, the buff Orpingtons are a daily layer. Uh, almost daily, they lay over 320 eggs a year. The barred rocks are uh, 265 plus eggs a year and often lay daily. The Rhode Island Reds are 240 plus. And uh, 
than variants of all the others. The Easter Eggers, I believe, lay the least often, uh, but they lay colored eggs, and that's why they get their name Easter Eggers. They're actually a crossbreed between multiple species, and they will lay eggs. I'll put a picture uh, in the post as well with the stills. They lay uh, a range of colors uh, from pale, pale, well, from white to pale, pale blue, pale, pale green, light lavender to really dark green, uh, dark lavender, and even kind of a reddish tint, um, reddish brown tint. So very wide range. And with an Easter Egger, whatever color that bird starts to lay, uh, they will lay some variant of that shade, uh, some variant shade of that color for the rest of their laying life. Uh, today we had our very first green egg, and I'm not sure which bird laid that, but whichever Easter egg laid that will lay green eggs the rest of her life. And like I said, we have 11, so we're hoping to get some of the variants, some of the blues and some of the lavenders, uh, some of the pinks. Um, just really, really enjoy having chickens. I find them very fun, and as you can see, everywhere I go, they follow me. Uh, pretty hysterical little birds. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video off. Um, give me just a minute. I'll let me show you one other thing inside the, the coop here, the big coop. I showed you the feed system. What I didn't show you were the barrels up here. These five gallon buckets, the two right ones, I keep uh, cra uh, uh, dried whole corn. And then these two on the left, I keep um, scratch grains. And then we feed them their own shells back when we eat them. We keep the shells and we bake them and then grind them up and we feed them back. And then one other thing I didn't show you is in this little, this little container right here, we allow them to free feed. I put their, uh, their shells back in here. I also mix it in with their feed sometimes. But I keep um, oyster shell, ground oyster shell in this one and allow them to free, free eat that. And that just helps with calcium intake for them. Um, Something else I didn't really show you. Let me get you a look at that. I have a large fan mounted up here, and then I have a heat lamp. I don't put the heat lamp right on them, but if it gets really cold and the water starts to freeze, I will turn the lamp, and it's not pointed there now, but I'll turn the lamp and point it at the water over here to, uh, to keep it from freezing. Obviously, when it drops below freezing you know, too far, and I just drain those out and uh, and refill these two hanging waters. But uh, that will help keep some warmth on them. And then in the summer when it gets hot, I blow the big fan on low setting. And it just creates a cycle of air in here to keep air moving. And you'll notice it's intentional that the seams are not sealed. It's not an airtight room. There is air gap all the way around the structure and in the corner over here to allow air through so that there's no horrible stench. Uh, we use cedar chips and straw, in, uh, in primarily cedar chips in the nesting boxes, and then cedar chips and straw, and we do what's called a deep litter, uh, and we take care of the ground that way. So what happens is we, we'll rake this all out, get it cleaned up, put down new a mixture of straw and cedar chips, and then when it gets dirty and starts to smell, which is about every six to eight weeks, sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes 10 weeks. We'll rake it all back up and uh, that goes into our compost bin and then we put down fresh chips and, and straw. And then we use the chips inside the nesting box. And when they kick that out, we just refill it and it just becomes part of the deep, uh, the deep litter system on the ground. Uh, something else I didn't really show you and they're not in here playing, but we do keep some toys in here. The girls will peck at the uh, at the little xylophones, there's a wood version there that they've knocked over. Uh, and then a plastic and metal little tykes version there. And they'll play that. Uh, pretty fun, pretty fun little things. Don't do it all the time, but sometimes I'll sit out here with them. I'll sit over on the, on the uh, perch and they'll peck at that and come sit on my lap or jump on my shoulder. But we really enjoy them. Uh, currently, like I said, I've got 51 birds. Um, most of them are just starting to get to laying age, so I'm currently getting between 9 and 14 eggs a day uh, from them. I didn't collect yesterday. Today I had 32 eggs, so I had a couple extras. The uh, green egg was one of the new eggs from one of the new birds laying, but uh, 
just kind of let them free range and free feed themselves. They have access to go in and out all day long. Come on, sweetie. But that is my my chicken coop set up. This is our small coop. I'll just give you a quick look at it. Again, we built this. This one's about four years old. Um, it's about time to give the ramp a, a, a update. <laughs> it's starting to come apart. But I have it set up where it locks so at night we can lock them in. Uh, there's trays. You'll see the handles here. Those trays come out so we can clean the inside. There's a larger door here. I need to clean it out again after we uh, took care of segregated some. And then uh, I don't know if you can see it there. Right there in the top left corner there's a heat lamp in there. I wired that in so that we can plug it in from the outside without having to get in there. It's all hidden wires and then the connector cord. If you reach up inside here, there's a, a extension cord. Just connect that to it and push it back in so it's water safe. It doesn't get water in it. And then that's all wired inside where the chickens can't get to the cords. Both ends have a raised, uh, a raised lid to collect eggs. These are the, the uh, nesting boxes. We do have the dividers that go in there, but we don't usually use them because they just knock them over uh, and we don't keep a ton in there. And same thing on the other side. There's another raised door uh, for the nesting box. And there. You don't have to go big and fancy. You can keep it small. You can buy ready-made. Uh, we started with four birds. We started with... Uh, so we started with three, three uh, road, uh, uh, barred rocks, three barred rocks, and uh, of those three, we still have one. Two of them have passed away, um, but we still have one. She's around here somewhere. I think that's her way over there in the distance by the pool. Let me see if I can zoom in on her. I think that is our oldest bird. She's in the middle of a molt, so she's uh, not real happy about being on camera. She doesn't like to be touched, but... Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this and take some stills to uh, show you the different breeds. And then I'll add some information about them as well. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, feel free to private message me. Post them below the video. Uh, let me know. I'd be more than happy to share what I've learned over the three and a half years, four years that we've been raising chickens. Really enjoy it. Love having fresh eggs. There's nothing like farm fresh eggs. And we sell our eggs. Um, where I'm at, we're in New Mexico. And uh, I sell my eggs for $4.50 for a dozen or $6.50 for 18 and I get it without question. Uh, you go to any of the local farmer's markets, uh, backyard flock, free range, um, organic, no antibiotics, which is basically what we have. Uh, we, just don't, we just don't claim all of that. We don't pay for the certification. But when you go buy those, those are $9 a dozen plus at any of the farmer's markets. And so we sell $6.50 for a for 18 and we get it without question. I have standing orders for my eggs. Uh, every week I sell out before I have them. Uh, I'm pulling in, like I said, I've been pulling in about nine, nine eggs a day. I'm finally getting nine to 12. Today I had, four, yesterday and today I had 16 eggs per day. I had 32 for the two days. So, you know, decent amount of eggs and uh, we don't eat that many. So I share with my immediate family and then we sell the rest. I sell usually three to four 18 packs a week and what I sell pays for all of their feeds. So the chickens really don't cost us anything other than in the initial stages where they're not producing and I have to feed them until they start producing. But once they start producing, they pay for themselves and they pay for all the upgrades. Uh, money I made from selling the eggs has paid for all of the metal around here, the door, the hinges, the lights, the waterers. They have paid for themselves. The only thing we paid for out of pocket really was the fencing. And I expect now that we're starting to get more, more eggs, uh, that'll pay itself back too. And all the money that we make from selling the eggs, we just keep in a, in a container. So anything that we need for the chickens, we buy out of that. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed and learned something. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We are not experts, but we do love, uh, we do love our chickens and love helping people, you know, learn new things. And if it's something you're interested in, I would gladly share with you any information I have and, and uh, what has worked for us and what hasn't worked for us. Thanks for watching.